Well, good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris again, uh, back in the uh, newish format that I'm trying out. Still working through some bugs, so uh, hopefully you guys can kind of stick with me there. I do apologize for uh, kind of the lower resolution. Facebook has a, uh, <coughs> a uh, I believe, a one gigabyte requirement on the, the bandwidth, uh, so it does, I have to reformat at a lower resolution, and I'm actually use, having to use a different camera that attaches to the tripod in order for me to uh, record here in, in this orientation versus on the smaller board. Uh, so there's still some limitations, I'm still kind of working through it, uh, and obviously I'm kind of, uh, kind of cheap, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to do it uh, as, as cheaply as I can, unfortunately. Uh, uh, just like a lot of people, your money is, is a little tight, but uh, I'm still working through those issues. But I appreciate you guys uh, that, that come on here and look at these videos, and, and, and ultimately I, I really do hope that you guys uh, find them helpful or interesting or entertaining as the case may be. Uh, so the, I'm going to continue along the lines of um, discussing the formula of respiratory mechanics, and we kind of talked about the, the concepts conceptually, uh, qualitatively, uh, and now I'm going to start talking about these concepts quantitatively. And I decided to leave these pictures up just because I think it's really important uh, to appreciate the dis difference between resistance and compliance. And I kind of like the pictures. I I'm not a great artist, and these actually aren't too bad for, for me. So I'm going to kind of bask in the, the glory of good art. Uh, it's not Rembrandt, but it'll do it, it, as far as I'm concerned. So the first concept that I'm going to go ahead and discuss is this resistance concept, and, and we kind of have got a, a conceptual idea, a qualitative idea of what resistance is. So let me go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and just throw up the formula for you guys, and we'll work through it, and we'll figure out what exactly the formula is telling us. So the proper formula for airway resistance raw when we talk about uh, mechanical ventilation um, is going to be the peak inspiratory pressure, the PIP, subtract, and this is very important that we subtract the plateau pressure, the P plat, and I'm going to divide that by my flow, V, with a dot on top of it. Now the flow, we're typically used to flows in liters per minute for flow. For this formula to work properly, what we're going to do is we need to convert liters per minute into liters per second. So if I have, let's say, a flow of 60 liters per minute, well, that's pretty easy. I just divide, you know, 60 into that, 60 seconds in a minute, and that gives me one liter per second, okay? So uh, liters per second, not liters per minute. Okay, so this is the basic formula. What is my PIP? Well, my PIP is, again, just the peak inspiratory pressure. It's the, the highest pressure encountered uh, during inhalation, right? Um, <clears throat> and then I subtract the P-plat out of there. And is, as you guys know, the P-plat is, is also the plateau pressure, also known as uh, static pressure. And basically what that pressure is, is once I get the lungs open, I get the volume, whatever volume that is in, and I kind of hold my breath for a minute or a few seconds. It's that pressure that's in the alveoli. It's the actual pressure in the alveoli holding the alveoli open. Now I want to subtract that pressure in here. I want to subtract that from my peak inspiratory pressure. It's very important because a plateau pressure, as I'm going to talk about with the compliance, a plateau pressure is more indicative or highly indicative of compliance, right? If I am measuring a pressure in the lung parenchyma itself, in the alveoli itself, because that's what the plateau pressure is, is measuring the pressure in the alveoli when they're open. And that's why I call it a plateau. In the inspiratory plateau, if I take a breath and I have the inspiratory plateau, I'm measuring the pressure here as, as the alveoli are open. I hold them open for a fraction of, of the inspiratory time, usually 10-15% of the eye time. Hold it open and I transduce what is that pressure in there. Now that pressure is indicative of compliance and we are not looking at compliance here, we're looking at airway resistance, raw. We're looking at 
how gas flows through the conduit. So I need to take, you basically can look at this p-plat as taking the compliance out of the equation. And that's what I'm doing because the peak inspiratory pressure is really a, com a combination of compliance and resistance. So you can look at it as I'm taking the compliance part, or, or more, more specifically the static compliance part, out of the formula, and I'm left over with a better representation of airway resistance. So whatever that pressure is left over, I am going to divide that pressure <clears throat> by my flow in liters per second. Now hopefully this should make sense because I'm talking about resistance is the resistance to airflow so it would make sense that I have to have some sort of pressure okay, to, to uh, represent that resistance and some sort of flow measurement. Um, again flow really is nothing more than the velocity of a gas, right? Um, it's not a derivative, it's not um, acceleration, right? Acceleration is, is basically the derivative of flow. Uh, this is an average, right? So at uh, 10, uh, for maybe 10% of the inspiratory time, my flow was 60, and then 5% of it, it was 80, and then... Now, th this is average flow, okay? This is that flow setting that I have on the ventilator, 60 liters per minute, average flow setting. So. This hopefully makes some sense that what I'm doing is I'm comparing pressure to flow. I'm dividing how much, how many liters per second it takes to get to a certain pressure. Now, today I'm not actually going to plug numbers into this formula, but and I'm not going to do that quite yet, but I just want to give you guys a taste to how to work this formula, how it works, and, and to give you a really intuitive feel for what this form, formula is really looking at. So, if you look at this, this is basically just a fraction. Um, raw equals this. So, if this number goes up, what is going to happen to my resistance? If this number goes up, my resistance is going to, well, that, that should, um, that should, be pretty obvious that the number on top of the fraction, as that number goes up, this number is going to go up as well, right? There's a direct relationship between the top, the numerator, and uh, the outcome. But what about the bottom? Well, the bottom, the relationship is inversely. There's an inverse re relation, and I think I talked about uh, reciprocal relationships the last uh, discussion, but I do think inverse relationship is a much better way of defining that. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means if my, my flow goes up, this is going to what? Go up or down? Assuming that this number doesn't change. Well, if this number goes up, then this number is going to go down. If this number goes down, this number is going to go up. Depending, uh, obviously, um, this could be highly dependent on nothing changing up here. And as we find out, um, actually flow is going to uh, increase or decrease my flow is actually going to cause very profound changes in the compliance department. Um, but just looking at this in a vacuum is basically what I'm talking about. So really, I think the take home point for resistance is look, resistance really is measuring how much pressure is encountered for a certain amount of flow. And I hopefully that makes sense, that as I, as I um, put flow through a straw, how much pressure is it taking if, let's say I'm going to exhale at 30 liters uh, per minute, and I'm measured, if resistance is a measurement of how much pressure it takes for me to get that 30 liters per minute through the straw. That is a very different concept from the concept of compliance. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, compliance, we'll move on to compliance real quickly. Well, compliance as we know is very different from resistance. Compliance is, again, how the alveoli open and close. So it's not so much the conduit that we're looking at, the airway, but we're looking at the alveoli. And, and of course, the chest wall 
and the abdominal compartment can play a large role in compliance as well, but ultimately compliance is the ability for the alveoli themselves to open up. In essence, how stiff the lungs are. So, as I kind of alluded to, there are actually more than one type of compliance. And the two types of compliance are static compliance and dynamic compliance. Well, what do I mean by static compliance? Well, static compliance is when I don't have air movement. Static compliance is a plateau pressure. Plateau pressure is, is, a ver is a, almost a direct measurement of static compliance. And in fact, we, we use the plateau pressure in the static compliance formula. So when I hold my breath, that's static compliance. There is no air moving, but there's still some sort of pressure in the alveoli. Dynamic compliance is just that. A dynamic system is a system with motion, a system in movement, a system where things are going on. So dynamic compliance is the compliance of the alveoli as they are actively opening. So static compliances, once the alveoli are open, dynamic compliances as the alveoli, al alveoli excuse me, are opening. So let's go ahead and just throw the formula out and we'll start with static compliance. So again, if I'm opening something up like a balloon, instead of talking about flow, I'm now talking about a volume. So flow pressure, volume pressure for compliance. All right, so let's go ahead and just throw up the formula for static compliance. And that formula is your tidal volume, okay, the amount of air that's going in. Vt is tidal volume. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that tidal volume by <clears throat> the plateau pressure, subtract PEEP. It's very important that we take PEEP out of the equation, right? Because PEEP is pressure that's always in the alveoli. It's always there, it never goes away, right? Positive end expiratory pressure. That's pressure at the end of exhalation. If I'm at the end of exhalation and I still have a pressure in my lung, that pressure is never going away. It's always there. So it really does not play a role in measuring my static compliance. So I need to get rid of that pressure and only look at the plateau pressure. And that makes sense, right? The plateau pressure is the pressure in the alveoli after they've opened, after I've inhaled and I'm basically, in essence, holding my breath. So really what I'm looking at is the, the volume delivered and how much pressure it takes to deliver a certain volume versus flow pressure. So two different variables here. I have flow and pressure with resistance. I have volume and pressure with compliance. That is static compliance. Dynamic compliance, well, what, what pressure would I look at when I have gas actively moving? Well, that pressure is going to be your peak inspiratory pressure. So for dynamic compliance, I still have my tidal volume, again, because I'm always looking at the volume it takes to open the alveoli. That's compliance, right? The alveoli opening up. So that's why we're looking at volume here. And that is going to be divided by the peak inspiratory pressure, the PIP, minus the PEEP. All right, guys, hopefully that makes a little more intuitive sense if you had any questions. So the, the three formulae that we're going to be looking at later on is going to be this little guy here for resistance, PIP subtract P plat divided by flow in liters per second, my static compliance formula, tidal volume divided by P plat subtract PEEP, and my dynamic compliance formula, tidal volume divided by PIP subtract PEEP. Static compliance, as we know, is going to be very important. And that P-plat plays a very important role in ventilator management when we talk about uh, reducing barrow trauma, volume trauma, shear trauma, things of that nature. Okay, guys, hopefully you found that helpful. Thank you.